so welcome with us Kelly Grayson to the set thank you so much Kelly for being here thank you for having me absolutely it. absolutely and we oh my goodness Kelly we could talk about so much stuff because you have been in film you have been in other other entertainment fields you work with at-risk children you are totally all about fitness and health I mean you've got so many things going on but one of the things that I really appreciated about learning about you and, and what you're doing is that you're really, really passionate about making a difference mm -hmm. and using the gifts and talents that God's given you to make a positive difference, to leave the world better right. than right. how you found it, right? Mm -hmm. And so some of the ways that you've done that is through acting. So mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about how you got into acting and some of the things that you've been involved in. Mm -hmm. Well, I feel like media is really a powerful medium for change and for affecting culture. Mm -hmm. And I think growing up, my dad especially always instilled in us, you know, you need to think. You need to think for yourself. And so many times, I think, in our society, people are almost groomed to just listen and respond. And I love to be a part of things that actually make people think for themselves and deduce, okay, what, what is right and why? Mm -hmm. And so that, that's part of my motivation, as well as just being a part of films that impact culture and make a difference and make people think beyond their personal small lives mm -hmm. and just, just realize there's lots of people out there with lots of needs and how can I impact them? One of the things that you, you also shared, even just in your paperwork and all of that, and, um, and in your testimony, is that even though you grew up in a Christian home, and this is where I really identify with you a lot, is even though you grew up in a Christian home and you knew about Jesus and you accepted Christ by faith at a very young age, I did as well, it wasn't until later as an adult that you really began to understand the grace of God, the love of God, right. that he didn't just save you, but he really loves you. He likes you. Mm -hmm. He has a plan and a purpose for your life. Can you tell us just a little bit about that part of your journey? Well, I think that's that's the gift of it, really, and something that you don't grasp. I think so many times Christians can get so wrapped up in legalism. and. I think ultimately the definition of religion is us trying to prove why we're worth a relationship with God. But that's the difference between Christianity and religion. Mm -hmm. And that's the essence of what Christianity is, is a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And so I think growing up, it was all about, well, I want, you know, God knows my heart, thank goodness. <laughs> Otherwise, it would have been just a bunch of works. But I wanted to do the right thing. I wanted to honor God. I wanted to please God. And so here's all these ways that you can do it. But there's so no freedom in that. And it really, a lot of times perfection can be bondage and to just live under that weight all the time and just have no freedom just breathe that's how I felt and to be able to grasp grace for the first time about seven years ago it was the most amazing moment just to be like you mean I can just breathe I can just I can just love living you know and be. yeah I can just be so anyway I, it was very eye-opening to me and it almost at first it was almost like well that can't be it can't be that I can make a mistake can't make a mistake, you know. So, and I would never want to. And I think any time that you have a true grasp of grace, mm -hmm. you would never want to intentionally mm -hmm. right. need it. Mm -hmm. But to know that you have it, if you accidentally messed up, whatever, was mm -hmm. really freeing to me. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know for me it was a lot of that too, of understanding that that at salvation I was given a brand new identity, a brand new heart, mm -hmm. a heart that in that inner person wants to do the right thing, wants to honor God, but just can't ever really reach that bar. And mm -hmm. realizing. He never expected me to. That's why he sent Jesus to begin with. Right. Um, was tremendous for me. So we could spend all evening on that because that is a passion right. of our hearts That's and what right. we teach. So we. I, but I did want to give you an opportunity just to connect with with our viewers on that as well. But in your knowing who you are, what God put you here to do, I don't think that there's a greater motivator for getting up in the morning than knowing why you're here mm -hmm. and knowing that you're going after that thing that you're here for. And we hear a lot about you know chasing your dreams and following your dreams. And uh, my brother actually said something, you and I haven't even talked about this yet, but he said something recently and I thought this was really good. And it wasn't even from a believer, and but somebody out there in Hollywood or whatever said, so much is out there for young people to follow their dreams, but nobody's teaching them to fight for their dreams. Nobody's mm -hmm. telling them how mm -hmm. the struggle they're gonna have to go through, that yeah. you can't just go after it, you know, and just think it's gonna happen, that there's work involved. Can you mm -hmm. talk a little bit to that? Because I think a lot of times, you know, when, when I turn on the TV and I see people and they're wearing their makeup and their cute clothes and all that, it's hard to, for, hard to remember that they're real people mm -hmm. who go through tough times as well, mm -hmm. you know? So I love to give that opportunity right. for our guests just to be able to talk about a little bit of just the reality of things that we have to go through when we're going after that thing God's given us to do. Right. Well, for me, one of the few things that would motivate me to actually want to get up at three or four in the morning would be getting on set. <laughs> so that would be part of it. But I think I think when it's something that you love to do, all of those other, um, it doesn't seem as hard. You know, when it's something that you feel called to do and you feel like you can make a difference in and that kind of thing, it doesn't seem as challenging. So I actually have been, you know, just in real life, you're right, there are so many things that are just, life is hard. You know, it is hard. And 
for me, actually, to be able to apply some of those hard things to different roles and characters is actually a benefit. So I can sort of be thinking of that as I'm in an experience, you know, mm -hmm. well, this could apply to this character or that kind of thing. You know, it's sort of a, a place that I can draw from. But I think, you know, <sighs> When it is life is challenging, you have to to persevere and try to just continue continue to press on. I mean, for me, I think actually being on set is is so much easier than real life. You know, so you have to get through all of the real life in order to get to that place. And if you give up, you know, at any level, then you won't make it to your ultimate calling. Mm -hmm. So I think really and truly knowing your calling yeah. and knowing your destiny and knowing why you do what you do is what keeps you going and being anchored in something that you believe in, something bigger than yourself, is really ultimately for me what I have to do in order to persevere through those yeah. hard things. Oh. And I think so. Oh, go ahead. I was talking to, with my supervisor one day and we were talking about finding yourself and he said, well, think of it in different terms of more of creating yourself. And I think about what your dad told you is to be a thinker and know why you're, mm. you believe what you believe. And I think that's what you're talking about is getting out there and creating who you are and, and walking in your calling. God's put it before you, but as you, you embrace it and, and go after it, it you really uh, find meaning and purpose in that. Right. Yeah, and you get to play a character in this next movie because we've got to talk about this movie. It is yeah. just too good, and it's yeah. doing too well. For one thing, I just want to say really quickly because um, we knew we were not going to memorize this. This is new information. <laughs> right. Is that um, alone yet? I can't talk. Alone yet not alone is the name of the movie. It became one of the top three highest-grossing movies this weekend um, in terms of per screen average, reaching thirteen thousand three hundred ninety-six dollars per screen in its limited opening in several cities. You can go to the website. We'll give you in just a minute to check that out. Actually, you could just go to alonenotalone.com yeah, mm -hmm. um, and check that out. You could see the trailer, which we're going to show as well in just a few minutes. Um, this per screen average dwarfed the screen average of most other movies, including Enough Said and Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, too. I mean, it's doing great. It is mm -hmm. a faith-based film. Mm -hmm. It is high quality, yeah, acting, right. sets, um, everything. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about the movie and your character. Okay. Well, the story centers around two girls. They are essentially um, captured by the Delaware Indians set during the French and Indian War. And it's their story of faith and hope in the face of survival is essentially the story. I play the, um, the older sister, Barbara, and it, it's actually, well, it's hard to talk about it without spoiling the story because I want everyone to go see it. And there's so many just poignant moments mm -hmm. that if I say it, <laughs> you're going to know what happens. Right. But um, it's really amazing to see how the thread of their faith and what was instilled in them as children, and that's something I want to impart to just all parents and just anybody. If, when you're speaking to people, words have such an impact. And to realize the impact that your words have on children, other people, etc. And in this film, it really depicts that in a really powerful way because what these girls learned, you know, at their family table from their parents stuck with them and ultimately mm -hmm. brought them back together and it's mm -hmm. such a powerful powerful story mm -hmm. I mean just the opportunity to be part of something like that and then for us you know we were just talking about the story itself and it's a part of history that we had never we'd never heard mm -hmm. we'd never heard of this family or mm -hmm. of this and it, it really does when we can hear these stories and then we can tell our children these stories we can share these with family and it won an award from uh, the double Dove. mm -hmm. double um, they got association the five right? doves, which is the highest recommendation it can get the yeah for word. being family friendly I mean I looked mm -hmm. at it when you're talking about you know you want authentic it's got you know so much in it right. but it's done with integrity it's done with honor mm -hmm. um, just incredible in just a minute we're gonna see just just a quick clip mm -hmm. of the movie. Can you tell us just really quickly what this first one is? The first clip mm -hmm. is, um, it's a scene where, well, I can't tell without giving away some of the movie, but basically in their struggle of, you know, what's right, my character, just what's right, you know, she's up against all these conflicting issues and she makes a decision. So she comes to her friend at that time under the waterfall and they have this discussion. That's kind of their secret meeting place because mm -hmm. they were in Indian village when they weren't allowed to speak English, they weren't allowed to associate mm -hmm. with each other. So they had kind of a secret meeting place and they would go there and speak. And so that's what they're doing. They're talking about what their next step is and what they feel like, what she feels, what my character feels like she has to do and what's right because she's finally come to that conclusion so that's kind of what's happening wow all right so we're going to watch just really quickly um, a clip from alone yet not alone and again you can check that out at alone yet not alone.com but don't do it yet because we want to show you this <laughs> i'm going with you 
What happened? Your mother's brooch? Where did you get it? From Belasco. You're right. I could never marry him. We're meeting at the canoes. In the full moon at its highest. Two days? I'll be there. Um, you know, Kelly, we were talking beforehand, and we're going to get to see the full trailer here in just a minute, which is incredible. We were talking beforehand just about, you know, your desire to make a difference in your life. I believe God puts that into each and every human being, and then especially into his children. Mm -hmm. um, but how can just everyday people join you right. in making that positive difference? Yes. Well, it's very simple when you have a film like this in the theaters, because really and truly you can make a mark on society. It's kind of like casting a vote. You know, if you don't get out and let people know what it is that you think, what it is you think you believe in, what is that you want to see more of. Mm -hmm. So when somebody you know, puts their money where their mouth is and they're like, I'm going to make positive change by making films that people that are family friendly, that are value creating, that people can go see. Mm -hmm. Well, we as viewers, we have to go see those films. Mm -hmm. And it makes a statement, you know, money talks and it will make a statement to Hollywood. People want to see more of these films. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of incredibly brilliant creative people mm -hmm. and if they see the genre that people are wanting to see, right. they will make more of those films. So I think, you know, I, I think something as simple as buying a ticket and going on a date with your wife, you know, <laughs> your husband yeah, or wife, yeah. go, yeah, exactly, <laughs> so, yeah, date night. Yeah. That's what it sounds like, that's what we're Yes, and, and impact in. culture, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, you can have impact culture with date night. Mm -hmm. So that would be my, you know, encouragement to everybody is don't underestimate how much of a difference you can make. Yeah, and I say all the time right, with, with Church for Chicks, you know, none of us can do everything, but all of us can do something. Mm -hmm. There's some part that we can that we can play, even mm -hmm. when money is tight. You know, praying for our brothers and sisters who are making this is a missionary mm -hmm. type endeavor, I believe, mm -hmm. because you are going into a whole other you know subculture of our culture right. and letting your light shine. Mm -hmm. Oh, and real in a quick. dark place. Yeah. Yes, yes, and all nine cities. It was limited release, but all nine cities have asked to keep it in theaters for another week. So if you didn't get wow. to see it this last weekend, try to make it this week or this weekend here in Atlanta. All right, we only have a couple minutes left, so we have a lot to cover in just a couple minutes because we want to see this trailer. One, really quickly, tell people how they can connect with you directly because you have a great website, lots mm -hmm. of information there. Right, kellygrayson.com. It's just my name, K-E-L-L-Y-G-R-E-Y-S-O, and make sure it's an E-Y. And it has all my other films that I've been a part of. Same thing, I'm really grateful to have been a part of them. They're actually really value creating, really awesome stories, inspiring, impactful, and talks about a lot of things that I do with my personal time and those kinds of things. You know, when we watched the trailer together before the show, um, one of the questions that we had for you that I, I just think other, uh, other Christian Americans, other people are gonna have is, um, do you feel like the film portrays the story accurately? Do you feel like it portrays Native Americans in a positive mm -hmm. light? I, you know, I know that we're all somewhat sensitive to, we don't want to offend right. Or, right. or anything like that. So can you speak to that a little right. bit? Well, it is a true story. And I, I really feel like, so there's a lot of just beautiful themes that are throughout it. But I feel like one, as far as the Native Americans, the, um, I think they really portrayed it very well. The production company was pretty careful, I think. And I think sticking to actual historical facts made mm -hmm. a big difference. Mm -hmm. And you see both sides of this conflict. You see the nobility of the people on both sides of this conflict. Mm -hmm. And they are caught in just the wake of what people in authority, you know, the government figures, really bad decisions mm -hmm. by people in authority, you know, pride and whatever else caused them to make some very poor decisions and then you see all these people caught in that wake so you see at the core of who these people are the Native Americans and the pioneers it's you know honor and virtue and truth and you know love of their families and they're both protecting something and they're both fighting for something good right. they're just on opposite sides of this conflict so it really portrayed it I think in a really good way you could see why people would be on either side of this conflict right. so I thought that was very masterfully done that's a hard hard place and they did a good job. It really is. It's going it's to open the eyes of some some folks to understand that there were some issues on both sides right. and, and to have some understanding instead of just blaming one side or the mm -hmm. other. Right. And just the position of government so often it's it's bad decisions that affect so many people. Right. You know, I would hope everybody in authority would realize that the effect right. of just a word. 
yeah. and how it affects and what the trickle effect is. I agree. It just points us really honestly back to just the simplicity of our need for the gospel message. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and so we're going to watch the trailer now, but thank you, Kelly, so much for being with us. I'm excited about all that God's doing in your life and what he continues to do. Thank and you. we know he's going to continue to bless this movie. We're going to be seeing it. I hope you will too. Check out That's this trailer. Right. Alone yet not alone. In a land of new found plenty. Yeah, we are blessed here. 200 bushels of corn from our own land. At a time when freedom belonged only to the brave. If we were still in Germany, John and Christian would be forced into the Duke's army for seven years. Fighting wars that, that never seemed to end as I did at his age. The true story of a simple family of unshakable faith. Each of you will have times of testing in your lives. For them, it was a new beginning. That no matter how hard the trial, but for others, God will never leave you or forsake you. It was the beginning of the end. We must attack the Yankee villages and reclaim the hunting ground of our fathers. No, savage, shall ever inherit this land. Is that clear? Pioneers in an untamed wilderness. Survivors tell of savage killings. Indians taking scalps. You no escape. Caught between two worlds. Now you become Indian children. In the ultimate test for survival. Women and children being taken captive. Cabins being burned. Inform me immediately when you ascertain what we have done to offend the Delaware chief. Alone, yet not alone. 